questions? Guys, all right? I think we're working through it right now. Okay. Cool. We'll definitely have to bend, carry, and lift. So let's just put right, let's put in struts or stabilization struts. Just add it. Muscle straight off. You all right? Yeah. We're good. Stabilization. Uh, Welcome aboard. Um, we gained some people, which is always nice. Hopefully, we won't have any calls, so you guys can at least stay through, through some of the program. So, thank you for coming up. We are, as I, I mentioned to <coughs> those that were with us earlier, we're being videotaped today. So, my suggestion to you guys is continue to face forward only because your name tags. You know, if you're wanted or if you got some, we look at your picture on Facebook and it's got numbers, something like that, we don't want to let anyone know that you're here. Okay? Tom Cornell is a friend uh, and colleague of mine um, from our dive adventures with our adaptive diving, which, by the way, even though it's going to snow tonight, we have our fundraiser, so come out, please, please, please. The beer will still be flowing, so don't worry about the snow. Where is it? Huh? Where is it? Sisyphus, Sisyphus Brewery. Oh, yeah. Sound yep, yeah. I'll write that. And I, you know, for some of the the, the Plymouth people, either I, I didn't don't know you, or I don't have emails anymore for you. So some of you got invites, some of you may not have. And I'll write that. I'll write that down. So you're more than welcome to come out. It's for a great, great cause. Um, uh, but Tom is is. Uh, the co-founder of that group, and I'm the other one, and we've dove together for a number of years, blah, blah, blah. So anyhow, he is a professional at this stuff. So I uh, thank him for being out there. <clears throat> As a way to recap on our um, Everyone Goes Home from Training 2, we're going to look at a case study from Texas. And you know, when we, we speak to those higher order very risky activities that we do in the fire service, this type of training should come to your mind. If you're familiar with the Smoke Divers program, does anyone know what the Smoke Divers program is? Smoke Divers began on the East Coast back in the probably the 70s. And what it did, or what the idea was, is that it was an intensive one-week training where you became very, very intimate with your BA in hostile conditions. So what they combine that with, and it's evolved to other states, obviously, <clears throat> is into a training where the, the emphasis is on firefighter survival, your comfort, and how familiar are you with your BA in various circumstances. Now, all of us and all the departments that are represented here probably train to some level of firefighter survival. Whether you're in the box, in, in Plymouth's case, or you're doing uh, reduced profile, you know, the swim maneuvers, you know, the um, disentanglement exercises, whatever they look like. This takes it to the, to the edge, this type of training. They've had issues with this type of training nationwide, simply because of the intensity and what it requires of the participants. Now, in this particular case, this is what you see here in quote, quotes is from their advertisement for this class. And they have requirements that you as a firefighter need to meet before you come to us to even apply for this. Unfortunately, they didn't hold to their own standard. Okay, so someone right out of basic recruit training, and this gentleman, is it Arthur? Alfred. Alfred. Three years on, probably would not be a candidate for this kind of class. That doesn't mean that we don't work Alfred up through training, sequence training, to get to this point. But coming right out of recruit training for a year or two and then into a program like this is not the place for that participant. <clears throat> the other issue is, is that they generally have medical requirements, is that you need to pass a physical and pass this physical before you can do this because this is a very physically intense type of training. It requires a lot of things. Now, Particularly in Texas, where this, this fatality happened, they're dealing with very, very high heat, high humidity conditions, um, with a lot, a lot of physical strenuous activity. So that's kind of the background for this. For the medical surveillance for Captain Smith was that he, <clears throat> what, they, what they had 
what Texas had at the time was that you filled a cell questionnaire out. You know, do I have high, do I have high blood pressure? Do I have cholesterol? Do I, do I smoke? You know, all this. Well, you, come on, fellas. We, we answer that how we make ourselves look fit, right? So he didn't go to a medical practitioner. So that wasn't a requirement, so he didn't do it. When they looked at his form, said, oh, he's, he's okay, he's good to go. Okay. So that was part of the problem. So let's go into, let me turn it on. And it's, it's right across from Dunwoody, plenty of parking, 5 to 8 p.m., $15 at the door, gets you taco bar, all you can eat, some beer, some fun, camaraderie, silent auction, raffle, all that kind of stuff. It'll, it'll be fun. Get to meet some of our, um, our people there. It'll be good. So. Tim, Tim McNeff from Carol Evan is the yeah. MC tonight. And so. Yeah, so we're looking, looking forward. It'll be fun. So come on out. Have fun. Bring your dog if you want. It's fine. They, they allow dogs. Yeah, yeah they do. They a, lot of these, there, so. a lot of these craft brewers, <laughs> you've ever been to them, they, they love kids and love dogs. So anyhow, we're going to do a couple of group exercises here. Um, we, we went through the forms rather, rather quickly. I, I know that. <clears throat> but we're going to put your, your skills to test now um, with a couple of training topics. So let's divide up. We'll go U3. So Blaine this way, Aaron, you guys here, and you guys can be a group here. So we'll have three groups. Um, and what you'll do is put your, your minds together. I'm going to give you an instructor outline. Okay, for a, for a topic, and I can't really speak to the quality of the, the outlines, but it gives you an example of what the instructor's kind of looking for, <clears throat> and then there's a practical um, exercise for each of the three. So what I'd like you to do for your, your, your workshop, if you will, is to do the blank one, but fill out the blank, and I'll be here to answer questions because <clears throat> the... The, the outlines and what's in them <clears throat> may not give you enough answers. You may want to ask a question about that particular training, so just ask me and I'll make it up <clears throat> as we go along. Okay, so let me, let me get those out. You should have some blank forms of this. If not, I'll make sure you have them. So every, okay, Here you, here's another one. We can use that. Sure. And then um, yeah, I like that. a rehab, yeah, a rehab yeah. facility right. of some sort, or a rehab area. Water. And we'll say shaded. Nice. Rehab area. Okay. Participant considerations. Sure. Um, here's what it says. Consider experience training competency of attendees. Is the test suited to the level of training experience of the participant? Adequate student and structure supervisory ratio, participant restrictions, medical clearance of participants, and crew rotation. So, I mean, we're all firefighter too, so this is right in our realm. I got to get back. I just wanted to see what...